Hi, I'm Mike Morgan. I teach chemistry at Bravo Medical Magnet. I'm here today to tell you a little bit about using laser disc and video disc players in your classroom. Most of you are familiar with compact discs that you would play at home in a stereo. A laser disc is very similar. It's a 12-inch version, one or two-sided of the disc, that has 54,000 still frame pictures encoded onto individual frames on the disc. They can be played back either individually or at a rate of 30 per second to give you a constant play time on a video disc of 30 minutes. Most of the video discs that you encounter in education are called CAV video discs, or constant angular velocity. The type of video disc that you would rent to watch a movie at home is called a CLV, a constant linear velocity disc. The difference between them is that the constant angular velocity disc can be used to do still frame or freeze frame pictures so that you can examine one frame of a video at a time, much like playing back a videotape at a slow speed, just much slower. Now, in education, specifically in the sciences, video discs started to come to fruition about 1983 and 1984 through a project at UCLA called Project Chemistry where they produced some video discs for the American Chemical Society. These first discs did not catch on very well in the classroom because of their high price. They were about $500 for a three disc set. Now, as we make this tape in 1994, you can get most half hour or one hour video discs between $75 and $150. Now these discs can be used to play back in several different ways. One frame at a time usually requires the use of a remote control. These remotes can work either with a wire or as a wireless remote like at home. The advantage to using a remote as a wired remote is that you can walk around your TV, even be behind it, looking at your classroom and control what happens without having to lean around in front and point the remote at the TV itself. You have a keypad on the remote control so that you can enter a number between 00001 and 54,000 and bring up any specific frame on the disk at one time. About the longest access time you'd ever have to deal with is seven seconds to get anywhere onto a disk. Another option when using a remote is to view things by chapters. Many video disks are now set up in such a way that one specific lecture demonstration, for example, from chemistry, will occupy a chapter on the video disc. What they'll normally do is on the front of the disc jacket, you'll have side A and side B listed, and you'll have chapters one through whatever happens to be appropriate. Now, memorizing chapter numbers is relatively easy. If you have to memorize frame numbers, it's next to impossible because of the number of combinations. So when you get a video disc, they'll come with a booklet like this one, and they will list each frame individually and whether it's a segment that you want to play through or just one specific frame to look at at one time. This is a pretty economical way of doing it. Most schools already have television sets. Video disc players are down to about $700 now for a good, reliable player. If you have the equipment it's also nice to use what's called an authoring program or an interface program. Any computer, personal computer, DOS-based or Macintosh, has programs available to it that will search on a video disk for specific frame numbers just by you selecting certain frames or certain numbers on the screen. Some programs now have gotten to the point where they are even bringing text up. And that's what I want to spend the majority of the time talking about today. What we're going to use as an example is the periodic table video disc. This was produced by a man named Alton Banks down in Texas. And he took all of the elements from the periodic table that he could safely work with or afford to work with and showed several different sequences for each element in its most common form, the way we might find it in nature reacting with air, reacting with water, reacting with four different acids, 15 molar nitric acid, 6 molar nitric acid, 12 molar hydrochloric acid, and 6 molar hydrochloric acid. 
reacting with base, normally six molar sodium hydroxide. You can see frames of them in their common uses with animations and different applications that are used for the elements. Now, many of these demonstrations are demonstrations that normally I wouldn't think of in doing a classroom. I might show the reaction of a small sliver of sodium with water, normally in a beaker or a petri dish on an overhead projector. Here, the advantage is you get to see a piece of sodium of relatively good size dropped into 12 molar hydrochloric acid, a reaction much too dangerous to do in a typical high school classroom. Now, because of the sheer number of reactions that were on this disk, a authoring program called KC Discover was published by the Journal of Chemical Education Software Division, written by a man named John Moore at University of Wisconsin, Madison, with uh, another individual named Ah Fong. Now, this program runs on IBM PC compatible style computers. Another version is available for the Apple II family, and a HyperCard stack is available for Macintosh based computers. In addition, at the moment, they are developing a toolbook version of this program for Windows-based machines. Now, the system requirements are really pretty simple. You need a computer with a monitor. Color is not required, but is helpful. And one floppy disk drive that's capable of reading a low-density disk. It doesn't have to be a high-density drive. In addition, you're going to need what's called an interface cable, and that cable plugs in to the back of your computer and goes down to the video disk machine. These are available for about $15 from different vendors. It is a special interface cable. The number of pins that are on it are different from a typical laboratory interface cable. So you will have to get a separate cable. Now the program itself boots up, gives you an information database about the elements on the periodic table, all of them that had been discovered to date when it was published in 1989. It will give you a screen that has physical properties, <clears throat> one that has a list of chemical properties, and then one screen that will show you the crystal structure for that element if it's available. You also get a video menu. Now, this video menu gives you different choices. <clears throat> They're the same choices that are listed for the different reactions that are on the video disk. The first one, we have the first element up, hydrogen, and our choice is the element. Simply by hitting the enter button on the keyboard, what we bring up on the screen is a picture of hydrogen in its most common form, which is a clear colorless gas. Now, since hydrogen really has no reaction with water, the video disk will just bring up a screen saying no reaction. It does have an interesting reaction with air. Now, this will actually be motion. And you can see the numbers in the upper left-hand portion of the screen that show the sequence as it's progressing. Now, hydrogen itself needs some type of an initiation to get the reaction going with oxygen. We'll repeat the sequence. So what they do to start it is they bring a candle up to it. Now, I can freeze frame this and now move it forward at 1 30th of a second per enter key on the computer. Now, as I bring it forward, you can see that the candle, or the match in this case, approaches the balloon. Now, what has happened here is we've discovered one of the flaws of a television set. A TV works by putting up different lines, pixels, on the screen. And since our eye only recognizes things at about one-tenth of a second, they change every other line every thirtieth of a second. And by bringing it down to this speed, what we can view is one frame where the balloon has not yet ignited with the hydrogen in it, and one frame where it has, and it's overlapped with every other line. If I go forward just one more frame, what we see is the entire explosion and we can restart the sequence simply by hitting a key. Now this is very nice for showing the details of specific reactions to your classes. Now, the program is very easy to use. As we go down, we have choices to see uses of the element. We just hit enter. It tells us rocket fuels. We go forward one frame, get a picture of the space shuttle. 
go forward another frame, they talk about dirigibles, and we get a picture of the Hindenburg. Now, next choice on the element is the next element found in the search we've done, or to choose any specific element. I'll enter that, choose the element sodium, symbol NA. Now, I get a screen, same as the last one, asking what I would like to see, the video menu. As I choose the element, we get pictures of sodium in what's probably its most common form, sodium lumps. Go to my next choice, it's reaction with air, and a butter knife comes down and cuts the soft alkali metal open and exposes a shiny inner surface here. Now, as time progresses, you can see that that starts to dull over and build up an oxide coating as is visible on the rest of the uh, chunk of the metal. Now, going down to the choice of the reaction with water, we have a small beaker with water. A piece of sodium is dropped in. This is a very common demonstration for most first-year chemistry classes. The nice point to it is you can stop it, and you can advance it forward one frame at a time. And you can even get a very clear picture of how when sodium reacts with water, no matter what the shape is of the lump that you drop in, you get a nice spherical piece of sodium that goes through the reaction. We'll repeat the sequence and let it play through all the way. Now, what's very common for video disks is to show a time lapse involved in the sequence. A lot of these sequences can take two, three, up to 10 minutes for a reaction to happen. In a classroom, that can provide you with an awkward pause or silence. Using the video disk, you can get through those sequences very quickly and show an end result. Now, for a reaction with acid, this is a demonstration I would never do in my classroom. Taking concentrated acids and alkali metals can be pretty dangerous. We have the potential for flames to be produced and for explosions. By having these on video disks, you can have the students go through an entire family from the periodic table, such as the alkali metals, in a relatively short period of time and see the reaction cheaply. It's not going to cost you except for the initial setup. And you don't have to worry about chemical wastes. Now. For common uses of the element, sodium vapor lamps, sodium chloride, sodium bicarbonate. We get a still frame of all three of these things. Now, this video disk in particular that I've been talking about is just still frame images. It doesn't have an audio portion to it. Most video disks do, and I have some others I want to talk about and show you with a slightly different way of presenting the material. OK, it's possible to control a video disc player with a handheld remote also, either by chapter or by frame number. I have a video disc here that is excerpts of lecture demonstrations and animations from the World of Chemistry videotape series produced by the University of Maryland. On the remote control, you have your numeric pad, a search button, play, pause, a display button, and then fast forward buttons to either fast forward one frame at a time or to fast forward until the video disc is told to stop. On the disc itself, there is a code after each frame that tells the disc player whether to play on to the next frame and continue playing as if it were a motion picture or whether it should stop at the end of each frame and wait for the operator to tell the disc what to do next. Now, those will come up as instructions that will be in the lower left-hand and right-hand corners of the video screen. Now, we're going to start with one specific chapter. I push the chapter number six, the search button, and it comes up onto the screen, liquid nitrogen and racket balls. When I push the play button, this will go into a motion picture presentation, and it will not stop until the disc player tells it to stop. 
In this container, I have an element that we're all familiar with, but most of the time is a gas, nitrogen. Only this is liquid nitrogen. And here, a couple of racket balls. Notice how they bounce very well. Now, what will happen to those balls as I put it in that liquid nitrogen? Now, this liquid nitrogen is at a temperature of minus 196 degrees Celsius. So the temperature inside there now is some 225 or so degrees below room temperature. So that ought to change the properties of those balls. Now, I can stop the sequence at any time by pushing the pause button. When I push play, inside there quite a bit. it'll start up again well, right at the same frame where it was stopped before. Put these gloves on because that liquid nitrogen is very cold. I don't want to burn my fingers. I am going to take one ball out and I'll set it right here and I'll let that one alone. And I'll take the other one out and just to show you. Now it's also possible to freeze frame with a remote control on a specific frame. Go backwards one frame at a time or go forwards one frame at a time. What this liquid nitrogen has done, because it is so very cold, I'm going to take that ball and hit it with this hammer. Here we go. Now, one of the advantages to working with a remote control for the video disc player is that you have the ability to hand it to a student in the front row and you can do a presentation that's an actual lecture demonstration and show video of what's going on at the same time or to back up and use the animations that exist on this screen. Steam coming out of there to indicate that the, all the air has been driven out. All right, I'm going to take the burner off and turn that off. Go cap this up. Right now, as the temperature decreases, the can cools, that steam will change back into liquid. As it does that, it will decrease the pressure inside the can. Oh, you hear that? As the pressure decreases, what, anything happened out here? The atmospheric pressure didn't change. It's pushing on the can just like it was before. But since the pressure is less, as we decrease the temperature, the pressure decreases. The can starts to cave in. There it goes. Now ah, look at the can. Notice how the can is crushing. The reason now, again, is because of that atmospheric pressure, the gas of the atmosphere. Inside now, the pressure was reduced because the steam condensed into that liquid, leaving a decreased pressure inside. The atmospheric pressure pushed in the can. Okay, Phoenix, Vlad, why don't you come up now and take a look at the alkali metal family. Locate potassium on the video disc and bring up a picture of what it looks like in its elemental form. Okay, does this look somewhat like sodium in the picture we saw earlier? Yeah, you have metallic lumps, different pieces of it, okay, irregular shapes. Show the reaction of potassium with water. Okay, we notice a difference between this reaction, potassium with water, and the reaction of sodium with water we saw earlier. This one produces much more of a flame as it reacts. Go to some of the common uses. Okay, potassium is fertilizer, K2O. Use the forward arrow. and we see illustrations of different fertilizers. Go forward one more frame. Potassium matches in low sodium salt. So we see that sodium chloride was used as table salt and potassium chloride is used as a low sodium salt for people whose diets require it, also as matches. 
Next, go to the next member of that family. Who is that? That's rubidium, RB. Rubidium looks very different. It appears in a form that's normally called ingot, which is a pretty toxic and hard to handle form, so it's presented in a vial. It has the same properties, more or less, as the other members of the alkali family, but it doesn't occur in a form that looks identical to it. Using the video disc, this is a nice way to go through a family and show students the different intricacies of families on the periodic table. I hope you found some of this material interesting and helpful for your choices if you want to start incorporating video disc technology in your classroom. Thanks a lot for spending some time with us today.